I'm Mike, and today, do plants feel pain? Is it a good enough reason to not be a vegan? We're gonna take a closer look at that argument and even entertain the notion to examine the implications, and then we're gonna take a closer look at research into plant pain and also plant biology in general. The basic premise of this point is that plants feel pain, so we might as well continue to cause animals pain by eating them and their byproducts. This is, of course, an attempt to devalue ethical veganism, but it's not even sound reasoning. Firstly, this argument uses the logic that two wrongs make a right. Wrong number one. Since we cause plants pain, then wrong number two, we should continue to cause animals pain. How? That's like saying since we cause animals pain, it's somehow okay to jump over and say it's okay to torture a person. But in a sense, it's even worse than that because the plants feel pain point actually invents its own wrong that plants suffer and then builds a two wrongs make a right fallacy on top of that. Amazing work of the imagination, really. Okay, let's hop into some basic biology. Plants do not have pain receptors and they do not have a nervous system. They do not have nerve cells. So they have no machinery for registering pain. But what is pain really? The definition of pain in this context is physical suffering or discomfort caused by illness or injury. To say that plants feel pain is to say that plants suffer. And to say that plants suffer means that they're capable of emotional states. And I challenge you to find a scientist that believes that plants have emotions. So why don't plants feel pain? Well, it would be evolutionarily pointless. Animals need pain because they are mobile and need to react immediately to survive. To summarize, actual suffering, suffering that has ethical implications in animals, does not occur in plants. Okay, now for a moment, I want to entertain the notion that plants do suffer. This is, surprisingly, a great reason to go vegan, because eating animals would theoretically cause a lot more plant pain due to the massive amount of plants that animals consume than if you were to just eat the plants directly. Think of a cow grazing, just dismembering grass all day. And the fact is, it takes 13 pounds of grain or 30 pounds of forage to create one pound of cow flesh. It's less for some other animals, but no matter which way you swing it, it's orders of magnitude more plant pain than eating plants directly. So aspiring plant activists should probably boycott meat too. Next point while entertaining this notion is that we are obligate plant eaters. We need to eat plants or we are gonna die. If you don't believe me, I will give you $10,000 if you are willing to give up eating plants for the rest of your life. So humans must inflict a degree of plant pain in order to survive, but we do not require animal-derived foods to survive, so all of that animal suffering is entirely pointless. Okay, back to reality with the cold, hard law. Well, the law is not always the best gauge for what is ethically right, how well would this plants feel pain argument hold up in court? What if instead of pleading guilty to burning his dog alive last year, Arthur Vieira decided to point at the judge and say, since you cooked plants for dinner, you are as guilty as me. No, that would not hold up because it is completely insane. Okay, now to the research on this topic. I could not go through this whole video without mentioning The Secret Life of Plants, the 70s book about how plants can almost psychically connect with human emotion and spike polygraph charts when nearby plants are killed and so on. Yes, our world would be much more interesting if this was true, but the results have simply not been replicated over the last 40 plus years. And trust me, I've wanted this to be true since I was 10. It's not, I'm sorry. Okay, so what actually fuels this idea of plant pain into the modern era? Well, it's mostly research on how plants respond to stimuli. Some of them are pretty cool. According to researchers at the University of Missouri, the sound of a caterpillar chewing can actually trigger an increase in toxins in the plant's leaves as a response. What we found was that having been exposed to those vibrations, those chewing vibrations for a few hours, primed the plants so that when they were attacked by caterpillars, they responded with much higher levels of these mustard oils that are toxic to caterpillars. But just because the plant is having this reaction doesn't mean that it's feeling pain, which is highlighted by how the research was done with simply a recording of the caterpillar chewing and not the actual biting into the leaf. 
Of course, this research is also twisted into articles that attack vegans like this one. Nice try, vegans. Plants can actually hear themselves being eaten. And here's another article attempting to anthropomorphize a plant response with, quote, when a leaf or stem is cut off, the plant cries out in pain by releasing the gas ethylene over its entire surface. Again, just because this is a chemical response doesn't mean there is suffering. We can gain some insight into this by looking at our own bodies. Upon UV sunlight exposure, which actually damages our skin even before a sunburn, our skin screams out by creating melanin, which blocks UV radiation and results in a tan. Does this environmental response mean that we are in pain? No. Would it be practical or even possible to say that a plant is suffering during these responses? to their environmental stimuli? No! All the research that is used to support the plants feel pain theory are simply studies done on how plants respond to their environment, much like how our skin responds to UV rays, and then someone takes it and uses semantics to spin it into sensationalist journalism. Plants no doubt have an elegant type of intelligence that can especially be appreciated in time-lapse videos and they are highly responsive to their environment, but that should not be mistaken for suffering. In the end, this argument is not one that most people use because they truly believe it and act on it themselves. It's simply used to diminish the all too real suffering that is created from eating animal products. Perhaps some actually do believe this, I doubt it, but it would certainly be to cope with the pain that they have caused animals by deciding that it's inevitable to cause pain no matter what they eat. But no, chopping off a lettuce leaf does not have the same moral implications as chopping off a lamb or dog's arm. Plants do not feel pain. So next time somebody brings this up to you, feel free to save yourself some time. Just copy and paste this video. Or if you eat animals and next time you want to use this argument, just please be aware that you are justifying Arthur Vieira's decision to burn his dog alive. Alright, that's it for today. Feel free to like and subscribe, and thank you for watching.